Good morning, YouTube. I come to you before my morning coffee. It's me, Arthur, the indie comic book guy. Today, we're going to answer the question, does your comic book suck? I give you Exhibit A. My first comic book, Battle Eulogy. Created this in 2007. It was myself. It was my first comic book, along with Marcelo Salazar. It was also his first comic book. So, question: Does your comic book suck? The narrative is pretty simple. A lot of times, on average, when you make an indie comic, it can cost between two thousand five hundred to around $4,000 just to produce one 20 to 24 page book. On average, we're looking at around $3,000. Let's give it that. Let's just say $3,000. Anyway, this question comes up a lot. Actually, one of my subscribers, they posed this question. They were like, hey, can you do a video about producing a comic book and at the end of the day, what's the pizza? Yeah. So, here we are. Does your comic book suck? We're going to use my first comic book as an example of Suckery 101. Trademark, by the way. I don't know if that's actually a word, but I'm trademarking it. Anyway, Battle Eulogy was my first comic. Totally new to writing comics. Didn't know what I was doing. But I had an idea in here. I wanted to get it on paper. I found an artist online. We made a comic book. Now, to answer this question fairly, we look at a few things. One, same with my reviews, story, art, entertainment value for your money. But we also have to throw in quality. It's a very important quality. And I guess we'll go with the anatomy of the story. So, Battle of Eulogy, number one. We actually crammed out three issues. Amazingly, it happened. So, first of all, let's look at the cover. This cover doesn't grab a reader's attention. Characters are just kind of thrown in spots. The logo, very generic. For some reason, I wanted Africa back there, and it was just kind of all over the place. This was not something that would really get a lot of readers' attention. It wasn't. So, the book is about this girl, Isis Hannibal. Her destiny is to resurrect her father, Hannibal, who died before he can complete his destiny. I know, right? It was 2007, what can I say? Anyway, so you have Carthage versus New Rome. That's the thrust of the story. This is the big bad. His name is Suge Punic. So, that is what it is. So, one of the things I really want to stress if you get anything out of this video is verbal garbage. A lot of times, baby writers, they will just Feel pages and pages and pages full of unnecessary dialogue. I did that all over this issue. Because a lot of times in our head, we have these masterpieces waiting to be put on paper. But in our mind, we're at issue 10, but we need to stop and focus on issue 1. So, let me give you an example. Verbal garbage. Look at this line of dialogue. I don't know if you can see it that well. But dialogue is all over that page. All over this page. Oh my God, look at this page. Apparently I had a lot to say. Let's see. Let's see. See what some of this awesome dialogue that I really wanted to put on paper said. Hold that silver tongue of yours, Amanda. 
or I'll force you to eat it. Hmm. It would appear at this time you and your sister poses. You and your sister poses the ability to project focus beams of pure beta energy. Too bad neither of you are real or I'll use your own abilities to kill you both for daring to overstep your bounds within my presence. Now, ghost dog of a woman, out of my sight. And then it just goes on and on. This is just the first two panels. Like, it just goes on and on forever. Um, I'm not going to talk about the art yet because we still have more verbal. Look at this. Net page. Get it up there. And as I was saying, one of the things baby writers do, we tend to overwrite dialogue. We tend to go with the, I gotta explain everything in this issue, and we forget. You have a cheat code, writers, when it comes to comic books. You have an artist. An artist is your cheat code. Utilize your artist to show these things. Whether it's a flashback scene, whether it's just some subtle detail, let the artist do his or her job. You don't have to explain everything. Apparently, I felt in this issue, I needed long-winded Dawson Creek style dialogue. That's a no-no. No, no, no. So if you're asking yourself, does my comic book suck? If it's filled with dialogue and it's covering up the art, and the dialogue's not serving a, any real purpose other than you want to use every big word you know, get rid of it. Now, having said that, your first draft of any comic book script, I say a good 60 to 65% of that dialogue is going to be blah, 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 blah. Trash. A good editor will come in, will clean it up. Grammar and spelling are going to be your worst enemies. A good editor will fix that. They will also help you eliminate a lot of that needless dialogue. Because, believe it or not, most of it's not necessary. Stick with things that will move the story forward. Utilize the artist to his or her fullest ability to tell this story. Cheat code is utilizing your artist. Now, having said that, I've seen... Bad artists turn a great story into trash and vice versa. So, there is a balance there. There is a balance. Now, how else can you tell if your comic book is trash? Pacing. I wasted several, several pages in this comic book. But people just sit around talking in the middle of a fight. They were just standing around. We know the fight's coming. But they want to give these long-winded speeches. Long-winded speeches. Instead of just fighting. That took up way too much, uh, too many pages. And when we got to the fight, it was short. It was quick. And even during the fight, they were like, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. So. Get rid of verbal garbage. Have an editor help you eliminate most of it. Fix that grammar and spelling. Work on your pacing. That's very important. Pacing that story. Now, I want to get the writing aspects out of the way real quick so we can talk about the art. As I said, having an artist for a writer in comics is a cheat code because... Again, a great artist or a great visual storyteller can make crappy writing seem like it's Shakespeare. I've seen it. You've seen it. We've all seen it. We've all seen it. So, like I said, it's my first comic book. This was Marcelo's favorite, uh, first comic book. We were not ready to tell this story. I was not skilled enough as a writer 
nor did I have an editor to come in and be like, bad Arthur, bad. And Marcella was still learning how to visually tell a story. Not taking anything away from him. Now he's drawn many, many, many indie comics. He's worked for a variety of publishers. He's grown by leaps and bounds. But in 2007, this is what we got. Let's talk about the art. Now, the art wasn't terribly detailed at all. And you can tell the character designs were very bland. There was no backgrounds. Everyone kind of fit a certain mold. I wasn't skilled enough as a writer to come in and coach my artists. When I wrote the script, it was the standard page one, panel one, five panels, description of the action, dialogue, that was it. There was no artist notes given to the artist. There was no notes given to the colors. Well, if there was a colorist on this issue. So, Side note, if you do have a colorist, put notes if you want certain things, a certain tone, a certain hue. Let the colorist know. Even the letter, if you need uh, something in bold, let them know. They cannot read your mind. This will save a lot of time from having to go back and be like, oh, well, I needed this in bold face. It happens. So, I didn't coach my artist. I failed my artist. I failed this book by not having that ability to coach my artists. And you end up with scenes like this where the artist didn't want to draw the character so he just made the character in shadows and draw and drew some hands. And again, no real backgrounds, no real details, and of course the verbal garbage. Another mistake we made, issue two, we switched art styles. Same artist, we switched art styles. Then issue three, we went back to the original art style. That is a pet peeve of mine now. Marvel and DC are famous, more so Marvel is famous of switching the artist in the middle of a storyline. You get that trade, you're like, what the hell did, did you do? It ruins the trade, especially if the styles don't match. So. For whatever reason, I know in indie comics, sometimes an artist will disappear or whatever, they'll quit because, hey, this other job's paying more, so they'll just, eh, I'll get to your project whenever. And so you're forced to find another artist. So if those things do happen, try to match the artistic styles. Um, again, going back to the art, you can tell there was really no attention to detail in the story. There was no attempt to really tell a story within the panels. It was more like, hey, cut and paste the scene here and we're going to be done with this page. I've since learned, again, coach your artists. Also, give the artist something exciting to draw. If you're just giving the artist, I say, 20 pages of people hanging around a coffee shop Listen to Ross and Rachel going back and forth. Should we? Should we not? Do I love you? Do you love me? Hey, we were on a break. An artist is going to get bored. You have a scene where the, artist, where the cast is just hanging around a high school. For what? Unless you have a story like Morning Glories or New Mutants or Umbrella Academy or Ninja High School or My Hero Academia. What are your kids doing at this school that's making this story so interesting? We need to know. Setting is also a very crucial component to any story. In this story, they were just hanging out in the desert the whole story. Just, you know, just hanging out. We're going to fight. There wasn't any real resolution. There wasn't. Let's go back to my fancy dialogue. So much for underestimating the competition. I thought I'd have time to dodge that one because it normally takes me a couple minutes to fully form a sand weapon the size, that size, 
with that type of density, why is it that women are... <laughs> what the heck was I right? Why is it that the women of the Middle East are so beautiful, yet so feisty? Must be bad upbringing. This, this rescue isn't going according to plan. Now, what ever shall I do with you? This creep is giving me no choice. I'm going to live. Isis is going to live. I'm going to have the use of... I'm going to use... <laughs> I'm going to... Where was I? I'm going to have to use one of the sacred skills... I only hope this works. I never tried using it in an actual fight. Sand exchange. The heck was I writing? What was I writing? Okay, so we're touching on the writing. We're touching on the art. This was 2007. Gotta remind y'all. <laughs> yes, I have grown as a writer since. Um... But it's very important. Let's get to the lettering. The letter is a very important part of the book. Do not underestimate he or she because they can doom your book. If the letters suck, your whole story sucks. I hate to tell you this. Hire someone who knows what they're doing. You will thank me later. Again, this is like the last page. Some other characters show up. The style was actually switched a little bit in this one. But again... Uninspired character designs, uh, no detail. That's a sun back there, if you can't tell. That's a camel. And Marcelo, he's evolved his style since then. Um, he started adding more details. But again, this was 2007. Now, does my comic book suck? It's my first comic. I was very proud of this at the time. Very proud. Why? Because I completed it. And that's the thing I want people to understand. Regardless if your comic is great, average, or if it just sucks, you completed something. But when you complete something and you're putting it out there to the public to purchase, to buy, to dissect, whether it's a critic, whether it's a potential customer, people will have things to say about it. Some will be great. Some will not be so great. This is when you have to check your ego because when you're putting things out there to the public to consume, you have to ask yourself, can I sit this next to an image comic? Can I sit this next to a Marvel comic, DC, or whoever? And it will hold up the same quality. This has nothing to do with the politics going on in the comic books. We're st strictly talking about having a professionally produced product. Will it hold up? Or will people look at it and like, eh, mm, not for me. First five pages of any comic book, they are your deal breaker. People tend to flip through comics at the store. They'll flip through it a few times, check out the art. Then they go back to the first five pages. And if that doesn't interest them, they're gone. Gone. Just like that. It's the same concept as a movie. First 15 minutes of any movie, if you don't hook the viewer, they're gone. Just like that. So remember that. Does my comic book suck? Yes. This sucks. Suck very bad. I am proud that we completed the issue. We completed all three. That's an accomplishment. Again, 
get your sense of accomplishment in the sense that you completed something, move on. Learn to grow. Learn from your mistakes. If you can't, then you missed the whole point in this video. Learn from your mistakes. Your first issue, eight out of 10 times, won't be your best. And it doesn't have to be. That's the beauty of it. It does not have to be your best. However, if you don't grow from here, and issues three, four, and five are still at this level or below, you shouldn't be, and I know some people are gonna feel a certain way, but you shouldn't be offering that to consumers. And I say this in all honesty, unless it's just a hobby, then do whatever. But for those of you who are out there looking at this as a business, who are looking at this as, hey, I'm a professional comic book creator, you have to grow and get quality product out there. Now, I know the illusion, hey, people are like, oh, I want the Indiegogo, I want the Kickstarter, I saw stick figures make $20,000. It can happen. I'm not saying it can't. But if your mission is to be a professional, deliver professional quality work. That's all I'm saying. Don't settle. Go out there and go beyond. Plus ultra. <laughs> Go out there and go beyond plus ultra. And let me know what you think. Does this comic suck? Does your comic book suck? Give it an honest critique, feedback. Let me know in the comments. See you on the next video. I'm the indie comic book guy. Peace.